one of the many ways that um, we, we've had to pivot this past year. I, I've been so encouraged by the story of the Binghamton Christian Academy, MIT, led by Shannon Clinton and Jill Bundy. Uh, they partner with our junior high ministry. Um, and, you know, one of the ways they had to pivot this past year was they were not, they, they typically will tutor students and they'll be in their lives and they'll be able to engage with them. But this past year, that, that wasn't possible, obviously, with social distancing and all of those kind of things. But one thing that they were able to do this year, and you heard on the video, was they were able to feed this, every student in that school this entire year. Typically, they only get to, to, to connect with the students who are in the dorms, but they were able to serve every family connected with Binghamton Christian Academy. And so I just wanted you to be encouraged by that story. I mean, there are many other stories that other, our other MITs are doing, but your giving to Grace Venture goes to minister to people all across the city and all across the world, as we're going to hear in just, uh, just a few minutes. Um, as we go into Missions Conference Week, I just wanted to real quick run through the schedule with you and just kind of encourage you to participate where you can. Um, so, so tomorrow night in Mike's Place, we're going to be having a, 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 a mission mission training time called Reaching and Engaging Internationals in Our Communities. Um, with, and it's going to be led by a guy named David Frazier, who's a good friend of mine who's lived in Turkey. You know, you guys know David. He is a great brother. And uh, if, you, if you have a, a, mind, a great commission mindset within your business or within where you work or within, you know, your community where you are, I really think you would benefit from this. So this is going to be tomorrow night. It's going to be in Mike's place at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there is a registration, but please, just if you're planning on coming, just let me know. We have about 25 signed up so far. But I would encourage you to come to that and get trained and learn how to. I mean, these are the kind of questions we're going to be answering. Who are the internationals among us? We need to know. Who, are, who is here? I mean, who lives among us here in the 901? How do they come to live in our communities? How did they get here? What's their story? Um, how can we engage these internationals among us for Christ? How can, we, how can we be effective for the gospel in engaging with internationals? And how can we in, uh, effectively engage in conversation with them about the gospel? So this is tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. We'll have some water and light snacks. But if you want to come and register for that, I would encourage you to come. that will be in Mike's place. Um, also, um, Saturday, we will have Taste of Grace. Uh, we will have it on a Saturday for the second year in a row. That's going to start at 4 p.m. Now, we have, starting at 4 p.m., the fishing rodeo, and we also have the volleyball tournament that's going to be going on. And there's a lot of trash talking going on about <laughs> within both. I mean, you should hear some of the things that is being said. So we, I need you to register for those things just so we can be prepared. So if you're planning on getting a volleyball tournament in, we need you to register really by tomorrow so we can uh, the athletics team is put, get, putting together a bracket. But let me encourage you with a fishing rodeo, too. Bring your, your grandkids, bring your kids, bring, just come out if you're just an, an adult and want to fish. We are putting 500 pounds of catfish in that lake tomorrow. All right, and look, that does not need to leave this room, okay, because they won't be there by Saturday, all right? But we're excited for Taste of Grace. We're going to have food trucks starting at 5 o'clock. Uh, Soulfish, Memphis Dogs, Central Barbecue, Rice Burner, El Miro, Uncle Lou's, Rock and Dough. We're going to have small cakes, cone ice, mem pops for dessert. Um, and then at 6.30. That's awesome. And at 6.30, man, they're coming. Um, you just convinced me. Yeah. And at, and at 6.30, um, uh, the Kelsey Taylor Band is going to play a house concert for us out there. It is going to be fun. And, just, and we're going to have some of our missionaries out there for you to engage with. Um, just to have a relaxed time together as a church family. We've been through a lot this past year and a half. I would encourage you just to come out and, and be together. Um, and we'll end about 7.30. And then Sunday, Jeff Saunders is going to preach for us in both services. And we will have missionaries in our first and second hour adult classes in here in Woodhall. And also our men, men's and women's class. And so there's just a lot going on this week. I hope you, you're encouraged um, this week as you hear from our missionaries. And you're, you're encouraged that your giving to Grace of Ann goes to impact and advance the kingdom of Christ all over the globe. Um, also, one other thing before I get to the questions, uh, the interview with Katie and, uh, Jeff and Katie, you have one of these sheets on your table, on your chair. Um, I always give these out every year. This is our Grace Venture Report. I just want, I, I'm not going to go through this line by line, but what I want you to do is, is take one home with you, put it on your fridge, put it in your, put it wherever you, you're going to be reminded how God is using Grace of Ann to impact and advance the gospel. Um, one thing I do want to do, if you are currently right now one of my Grace Venture committee members and you're in this room, would you stand up? 
if you're currently on the committee right now, um, yeah, I just want y'all to know who's on the committee, by the way. I just want y'all to know. All right, y'all stay, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Now, if you have been on Grace Venture before, if you've served on Grace Venture in the past, in any, any year, whether it's 20 years ago or last year, please stand up. Anybody? Look at this. Okay, you guys can see this. I, I, use, I use this as an illustration, though, for you to know that Grace Venture and the decisions that go um, with, with our mission partners and how we give, it's you. You make the decisions. You, we, we collaborate together, and we, we, we pray, and we ask God to direct our steps. And so just for those who are new, maybe you don't know the Grace Venture process, the Grace Venture Strategy Committee is made up of 12 lay people, 12 Grace Evan members, that's the key word, members of Grace Evan, three elders, and then two staff. And so I just want you to know that's how we decide and we collaborate together. There is so much wisdom in plurality, right? There's just wisdom as we gather together, as we talk, as we pray and ask God to guide us. And so that is the way Grace Venture works. And so I just wanted you to be encouraged by that and uh, the things that have been happening in this past year. And one last thing before, um, you know, this, this past year, um, our church, y'all, I'm sure you know this, is, is incredibly blessed um, um, in the past few years. Our giving has just been incredible. And our, our committee, we, we looked at each other and said, how are we going to respond to the faithfulness of God, to Grace of Anne? How are we going to do that? How are we going to respond to how faithful God has been to us despite everything going on? And so we did something, well, which I just titled the Going Deeper Challenge where we assessed, we have 46 currently monthly supported ministries. This is one, the Saunders, Katie, uh, Jeff and Katie Saunders. They are one of our 46 monthly supported ministries. And we assessed and asked them, hey, how are you doing after this past year? Do y'all remember getting that, having that conversation? Yeah. How are you doing? What's going on? Are, are you, um, how, how has your ministry changed? Has your giving gone up? Has it gone down? Help us learn more. And out of this 40, all of our committee members, we each reached out to, to two to three of our uh, ministries and found out so much good information about our ministry partners, our missionaries that we support. And so through that, we were able to increase our monthly giving because of the faithfulness of God. We want to say, God, we trust you. We want to give more. We want to go deeper with our, our monthly support of ministries. So we were able to increase our monthly giving from 28, around 28,000 a month to 41,000 a month. And so I'm just so encouraged by that. I hope you are too. We, uh, our, committee, our committee worked so hard um, and had just such good conversations around uh, the Going Deeper Challenge. And so we were able to increase our giving to many of our, our, our missionaries and our partners. And so I hope you're encouraged by that. Um, all right. Jeff and Katie, it is good to have you guys among us. Um, so you guys have been here in the States for how long? Yeah, so we've been in the States for almost three months. Um, we got in, uh, had a couple weeks out in California and some training in Denver, but we, we initially flew back on July 11th. Okay. Got to the Memphis area at the end of July, so we've been here for, what, two months, I guess? Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah. And so what's it been like? I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, you know, you've, you went over to Japan in 2016, is that right? 2016. Now, is this the first time you've been back for an extended stay since 2016, Katie? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what's it been like the last few months? I mean, I'm sure it's been hectic. Yeah, I mean, it's felt hectic. We're at a different church every Sunday presenting, and so our kids are in different nurseries. We have a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, God has made them very extroverted, and I'm very thankful for that because they have run into every new nursery. If there are people there, they're good. Um, so I feel thankful for that. And we've gotten to see both of our um, parents live here and one of my siblings and um, both of Jeff's siblings too. So that has been over abundantly sweet <laughs> to be with them a ton yeah. while we're here. So now you guys, y'all have um, connection. You have your roots are here, right? Yeah, that's your, right. Your roots yeah. Here. So tell us a little bit about your roots. Well, you know, just you're, you're growing. You grew up here. Where you went to school? What are your? Tell us about your connections here. Yeah. So Katie was born and raised. I was just raised. Uh, my family <laughs> transferred here when I was in the fifth grade and um, kind of jumped around to a bunch of different places. Um, probably grew up for the most part at Bellevue and. Um, 
I uh, went to the University of Memphis. That's where I graduated from. So I stayed here and uh, Tiger High. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, we began dating when I was in college. She was finishing out her, her senior year of high school. And um, we were both lifeguards at the local YMCA in Quince Road. So yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the connections are deep in the Memphis area for sure. <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. So, okay, so we've talked a little bit about, okay, you've been here for a few months, um, you know, just reconnecting with family and just seeing friends and that kind of type of thing, but I'm just curious, I mean, tell us a little bit about, I mean, none of us in here, I mean, I, I know some of us have been to Japan before, but tell us a little bit about life in Japan. I mean, what, I mean, you, you are two, two Americans, you know, two <laughs> children trying to make connections in Japan, so what is ministry like there, uh, either one of you? Um, yeah, so, I mean, at the very beginning, when we launched into uh, Japan, it was the end of 2016, so mid-November 2016, it was uh, just the three of us at the time, me, my wife, and our 11-month-old daughter, Emery, and um, didn't know what to expect, that sort of thing, but we knew that uh, language school was, was kind of one of the first things that we, that we needed to do, and just the whole, you know, language acquisition process was just so important for doing ministry in mm -hmm. Japan. And so really the first two and a half years was very much just about language acquisition, cultural assimilation, really just kind of survival um, because uh, you can do English ministry in Japan, but um, to really be able to kind of serve long-term, language is just, it's key. It's really kind of a necessity. And so we knew um, that, you know, the first couple of years were primarily going to be no ministry or just a little bit. You know, we had... Um, our mentor along the way just said, you know what, you know, just to, um, uh, you know, to make sure that you're not running the risk of burning out, mm -hmm. do enough ministry to keep your heart warm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we found ways that we could serve even while we really didn't know a whole lot of language. Uh, so, and the Lord was kind. He was just a good father to be able to kind of bring different things to us, uh, ways that we could serve uh, the kingdom, even with our little bit of, yeah. you know, language ability. So where are you guys in the language now? I mean, you know, I, so we had dinner a couple weeks ago, and yep. I was really impressed with your language, but I don't speak any Japanese. So where, are we, where, where It can are, sound really impressive if you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we feel proficient, fluent, something like that. I would say we both feel comfortable in everyday conversations. Um, Jeff is preaching and teaching Bible studies in Japanese. I have tried my hand at teaching some Bible studies in Japanese with a lot of editing help from a Japanese friend. So yeah, that's, about that's right. Where now, you may not know this, but this past summer, we did something called uh, the Window on the World Summer with our amazing Graceland uh, ministry. And so you guys, I was really, our kids were just fascinated, the fact that <laughs> Ezra and Emery said, spoke in Japanese towards the end. I just remember how yeah. impressed they were with yeah. that. So, but, the, you know, that was just a, such a cool connection mm -hmm. for our kids to, just to see you know, I know Ezra was all over the place in the video. I was laughing. <laughs> but, I mean, it was just cool yep. for them to see, you know, hey, here are two kids. You know, they're living in Tokyo, and they're being mm -hmm. raised by, you know, uh, you know missionaries in, in, to in Tokyo, mm -hmm. Japan. So how encouraging that was. Because one thing, if we're going to, you know, I've, I've been really passionate about as a missions pastor here at Grace Van, is just raising up kids who care about missions. Yep. Who not, aren't going to necessarily move to Tokyo one day, but just are going to apply missions in whatever they do, whether whatever their job is. And so that was just a, it was a really encouraging video. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious. Okay, so when and how did God start giving you a heart for the nations? Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, at what point? You, you both can answer this one. But uh, when did you did you think I could seriously see myself moving overseas to be a foreign missionary? Yeah, I think for, for me, uh, just growing up, I had a number of opportunities to, to serve um, d d domestic mission opportunities, international mission opportunities, and um, you know, my parents pushed me into those, you know. I mean, I think that there was an attraction to them, but, but it was also helpful to have really supporting missionary or supporting uh, parents that uh, really wanted me to kind of seize those opportunities and just great friend connections, people that also cared about missions. But it was through those really short-term mission trips um, mm -hmm. that uh, we began to just, yeah, our, our worldview began to expand. And, you know, we just got to see how God was working in other parts. of the, It's just so easy to get kind of tunnel vision, or at least for my, it was so easy for me to just get tunnel vision and focus on what, what God was doing. And 
uh, kind of just in my um, immediate surroundings, but, but to, through those mission trips to have kind of an expanded worldview was just huge. And so it was, that, it was through those, it was really kind of coming out of high school and some into college that I began to just kind of entertain the thought, like, what, what if I was to, mm-hmm. to serve long term mm-hmm. on the foreign mission field one day? Mm-hmm. Okay, what about you? Mine is similar. I grew up at River Oaks Church um, up the road in Germantown, and we had missionaries come. I remember mission conferences. I remember, I can picture myself in the parking lot after a missions conference. I must have been in middle school thinking, I think this might be what God has for me. And I also remember I went to Haiti with um, a church that I helped work with in college, and I remember a friend saying to me, she said, you look like you could do this. And I feel like I could not do this. (laughs) Um, But it was just a sweet message from the Lord to me. Um, And then the first time we ever went out on a date, he mentioned that he might be interested in missions. And I was like, oh, well, me too. Um, It was a real blessing. And I think it's just always been part of my heart, but it was the blessing of my church caring about missions and really putting missions in front of me um, every year. And my parents also um, were missionaries for a short period of time, and so it seemed possible. And so, yeah, that's my story. Okay, so how how did you decide on Japan? I just find that interesting. How did you <laughs> how did you decide on Japan? Like, were there maybe specific experiences that you mm-hmm. had with the Japanese culture? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what led you to, in the direction mm-hmm. towards Japan? Yeah, I mean, I, I've kind of reflected on this quite a bit because we've gotten this question a, a few times before. I mean, I think that as I've reflected, my answers changed a little bit. I mean, I think as, uh, you know, really kind of early on, um, you know, I had an appreciation for Japanese culture. I mean, I still remember kind of conversations that I've had with, that I've had with my friends or I had with my friends. We were playing Nintendo and just kind of being like, wow, I mean, the Japanese are so cool. You know? <laughs> uh, but, you know, then you see the language and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to learn that. <laughs> um, and so there's just kind of, little, I mean, appreciating Japanese cuisine and uh, history and that sort of thing. And so there's always an appreciation for Japanese culture. Um, but when we launched into St. Louis for seminary, um, it was really kind of in those three years that, um, well, we, we had an openness because of the mission trips that we went on. And so... Um, Covenant Seminary, the seminary I graduated from, had a number of like, um, uh, like ministry lunches, things in between classes where you could get a free lunch and can learn about some ministry, whether that was in St. Louis or another part of the United States. Well, oftentimes those were um, missionaries that returned back to kind of give just, um, uh, you know, kind of just kind of give a window into what they were doing internationally. And uh, it just, it seemed like a lot of those ministry lunches were centralized around Japan actually, interestingly. And so where we were just kind of initially pursuing these ministry lunches, thinking that they were just broadly about missions, ended up being kind of more centrally around one country, Japan. And so it was about a year and a half of these like ministry lunches and other conversations and meeting people that were on the trajectory to, to, to go to Japan that we began just kind of wondering, mm-hmm. hey, this is weird. Japan just kind of keeps coming up. And, yeah. you know, uh, maybe we should maybe we should pray about this, you know? That's uh, a noble thing, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and so maybe we should pray about this. And that was a dangerous thing because now we've been in Japan for the last four and a half years. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about you? Um, so I tell this every time, but when Jeff came home, the first time he went to one of these ministry lunches, and he said, I know we're thinking about missions. We were thinking about unreached people groups already. Um, and he said, what about Japan? And I said, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, no, it's, and he said, why? I said, it's too different. It's too foreign. Mm. I don't know anyone um, from Japan. I've never been there. I did not grow up with an appreciation for um, anime or video games or anything like that. Um, It felt too, too far a cry. And then one, a pastor from Japan came um, and our friends hosted him for dinner and we went there and he started talking about the spiritual state in Japan, he started talking about the fact that 90% of people live their whole life and never meet a Christian. And I left that ministry lunch saying, oh, we're going to Japan. <laughs> and, I, and then we went to Japan to visit and God transformed my heart from oh, to, to excitement, overwhelming excitement. I fell in love with the city of Tokyo. It is exhilarating, enthralling, it's beautiful. The people are beautiful, and God really, God really moved my heart. From and so much so that it actually was her that initially was like, "Hey, I feel ready. I actually feel like maybe God's 
calling me to, to, to serve in Japan. And wow. so I, we, we took a vision trip together and uh, she was my like sugar mom at the time. So she was just paying for me to read to all my books. And and <laughs> so she had to go back to work. And so I could stay a little bit longer in Japan. Uh, but it was while I was still in Japan and she was back to work that she, you know, we had done FaceTime or whatever it was at the time. And uh, she was like, hey, I think, I, you know, I think, I think I'm ready. You know, I'm so, kind of surprised, but, you know, if you, if you feel it too, you know, I, you know, I think that uh, maybe this is something that we continue to walk together on and keep moving forward. And I was kind of, I was starting to get a little scared, you know, <laughs> so I was like, well, hold on, wait, hold on. <laughs> this is our life. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, after another period of about three months, once we got back to St. Louis, it just became evident. You know, I think one of the key things was, you know, because we got to a point where it was like, okay, look, we, you know, we have no talking donkey, no burning bush, you know, to tell us, hey, go, you know, go to Japan, you know. That was just like, okay, what, what do we do? We're praying about this. We're talking to pastors. We're talking mm-hmm. to friends. You know, um, in the council of many, there's wisdom. And so, we, you know, we tried to, you know, really kind of... Um, really have as many conversations as, as we could around, mm-hmm. you know, whether or not this is something that we were called to. And it was really, you know, one person's advice or uh, something that somebody said to us that uh, I think really um, encouraged us and was just to, to, to walk forward, to just kind of take a step forward mm-hmm. in that direction mm-hmm. and see what happens. And so it was a lot of just kind of continuing to take one step and then another step and then another step and uh, praying along the way, like, hey, if I'm just being a complete idiot, like, God, will you please just, like, slam the door shut, you know? Um, am I being just completely foolish in this kind of this pursuit of, you know, foreign missions in Japan? And uh, we just kept going at every kind of place that we felt a little bit of doubt. We just kind of had God kind of reassure mm-hmm. us along the way, so. That's great. Yeah. Now, your, your primary job is to reach college students. That's, you know, your objective, right? Um, so how does an American family reach Japanese college students for Jesus? And, and like as you answer that, what is a, a typical Japanese college student like? Yeah. Um, you know, a, a typical, well, I'll start from the back. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that a typical uh, Japanese college student is very similar to a uh, student here in the United States. I think if you put them together, they both want to have fun. They both want to occasionally skip out on class. Um, <laughs> they, um, yeah, just want to have a good time. They take their studies seriously to a, to a certain extent, um, and uh, they all have hopes that this would lead to uh, a job after after they graduate. Um, and so, in that sense, they're very very similar. You know, certainly they're you know they've grown up in a culture that's that values different things than than our American mm-hmm. culture. And so, you know, they grow up in a culture that's that uh, with values that very much have been shaped by the two main religions that are, that are in Japan, Shintoism and Buddhism. And so um, there's a little bit more emphasis on different things. Um, you know, I think that Japan is a pretty secularized uh, uh, country. And so, you know, a lot of, especially probably the younger generation, are pretty removed from kind of the, um, kind of the spiritual things that are, that, you know, I think permeate culture. Um, and so... I, I would say even nowadays, uh, probably Japanese college students are even more similar to, to Americans in that regard. But yeah, certainly family values, um, at, you know, are, are something that you kind of have to work through. Um, but yeah, in a lot of ways, I, I would say pretty similar. Yeah. And so for the other part of how does an American family reach Japanese students? Um, well, we were commissioned, Jeff was commissioned to be the RUF campus pastor for Tokyo uh, two months before the pandemic hit, and all the universities closed their doors, 250 campuses in Tokyo, none of them were open. And they don't have dorms because space is very limited and people live at home or with friends or whatever all over the city. And so we said, God, what do we do? Jeff said, I was listening to him, and he's like, what ideas do you have? And I said, none, I don't know. And God really worked, and he, even though we felt like our hands were tied, God started bringing students to us through, Jeff um, got on language exchange apps and just offered some language exchange, and students really latched onto that. He told them that he was a pastor. They don't really know what that means. They think (laughs) weddings, like that's about all they've got because it's such a culture that has- We're the guy that does this. Yeah. So we get a lot of that. Oh, you're the guy that does this. Yeah, sure. And some people are really confused that we're (laughs) married. They're like, but I'm like, oh, he's not a priest. He's a pastor. Um, (laughs) But they they really- They wanted to call me father for a little while. And I'm like, guys, 
I guess that's, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you'll come to my house and I get the opportunity to talk to you about Jesus, that's great. So, um, but God just brought these students. It did not, it does not make sense besides the Holy Spirit why these students were interested in having this language exchange. And it was, I think, one of the things the pandemic created for us was they were so in need of community and something to do that when Jeff said, hey, my wife and I, we want to host a Thanksgiving party. Have you ever had turkey? And they said no. And we had 15 students show up at our house for a Thanksgiving party. Um, And it was so fun. And then we did a Christmas party and other things. And so that has been one way that the Lord has brought um, students together in a way that was very surprising and totally his hand. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would, to just kind of echo what just what Katie just said, um, you know, I think that as we were kind of, and it's still a lot of deep reflection that needs to be had, but as we kind of look back over this, you know, basically start try, or attempting, not doing well, but attempting to start a college ministry, like right when the pandemic hit, just had a tremendous amount of challenges. But I think, and this is what Katie said earlier, I think that the students were so starved for human interaction because mm-hmm. when they shut down, all the gates literally shut. You know, like Katie said, 250 campuses in Tokyo. There's almost 2 million college students in, in Tokyo alone, which is double, two million. Sh- double Shelby County um, in 18 to 21 year olds. <laughs> um, and so when that shut down, it wasn't like I could go bang on the door of a, of a dorm room. And so there was a lot of like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? But once, but, but God, but God. Um, he began bringing people to us here. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do to like search out a student, make connections with students? You know, how am I going to think about the, the, the going portion? And God was still at work and he was, he brought the students to us. And so God began building this group. And, um, I think it was just, yes, yeah, students didn't have extracurricular activities. They were all canned by administration because of COVID. Um, none of them had met any of their classmates because of COVID. You know, so they're all online, but you know, the way that they set it up, I, I don't know how you guys do it. If you're a college student, how you did uh, online classes during COVID, but like in Japan, you would log in and you would only see your sensei. You would only see, only see your prof and you wouldn't see any of the other students. So nobody knew even what they look like. Hmm. And so, you know, they're just all in their, their room every day. I asked a couple of the students who are part of my, my group and I said, well, like, what are you doing? Like, you, of course, you have to log in for your class and stuff like that. And they weren't even really going because they were so depressed. So they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm not even logging in. Um, I was like, okay, cool. So what are you doing? You know, you live alone. Uh, they're like, I drink. Mm-hmm. Like, pretty much all day. Mm-hmm. Wow. By myself. You know, and so that was, and, and these students weren't rare. I mean, it was, as I began talking with more and more, it was very, very similar. You know, everyone had different vices, but like, there was just kind of this, you know, this pursuit of these things that would make them feel better, that would, you know, their attempt to kind of numb the pain that they were feeling. And so, you know, here this weird 34-year-old guy, white guy, American, is wanting to like, you know. Priest. Yeah, priest. <laughs> Fa- Father Jeff is, is, is wanting to go get coffee. And I'm like, man, these students are going to think this is so weird. And they probably did. I mean, I, be, I talked with them later. Like, did you think that was weird when I first asked you to go to coffee and that sort of thing? And they're like, yeah, I don't know. I was just wondering why you wanted to do it. I mean, we're 18, you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm 20 years old. You know, why did, why did you want to hang out? With, did you not have any other 34-year-old friends? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is lonely. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we've talked about ministry, um, but kind of shifting now to your family. I mean, so you're, you're raising uh, two young kids. I mean, you've got a marriage and... Your own. Tell me what are, what are the best aspects? Maybe the, maybe some of the hardest aspects mm-hmm. of trying to raise a family in a, in, a, in, a, in a foreign context. Maybe maybe God is raising up some in this crowd tonight mm-hmm. to could go do the same thing. How would you encourage them? You know, mm-hmm. with the, how how's God working through your family as you raise raise your two kids? Um, I think one thing I hope for, but I don't know yet that I feel hopeful and I've seen in other missionary kids, is that they will have a soft heart for the outsider. Um, They are the outsider. My daughter is the only one with blue eyes in her whole school. Um, And there's 75 kids in three grades. And she's the only one with blue eyes. And um, when she was younger, people, some people thought her eyes were beautiful. Younger kids thought her eyes were scary. Um, I just, I hope and long for that. Um, They're still five and three, so that's yet to be seen. 
But what I tell people, even in Japan, actually, what I talk about, because they're confused too. Why would you move away from your family? I could never imagine doing that. My Japanese friends ask me that a lot. And I say, one of the beauties of it is I get to see my culture from an outside, and I get to see another culture from an outside, and I get to pick and choose where I feel like、um, God is leading me to parent my kids. So I make some decisions that are a little more Japanese, I make some decisions that are a little more American.、Um, and that is, has been really just fun. If you just want to talk about fun raising your kids, I, get, I feel like I get a lot of choices、um, in raising my kids. In Japan, and I think they benefit a lot from the culture around them from a very communal society. I really love their, they have an eye for other people that all their friends in Japan have,、um, but I did not have when I was a kid growing up. And I think that feels really cool, and I feel really thankful for that.、Um, it's definitely difficult. I Um, have to operate in Japanese for their schools. I have to read Japanese for every piece of paperwork that comes home. I've got to sit down and take a deep breath and, and gear up and read、um, all the text messages from all the moms about what we're supposed to put together for the graduation party.、It、takes me about an hour at night to go through. So there are some things that are hard,、um, but I really feel God's blessing in it because. I really do feel like I have to lean on him so much there. I need him so desperately there.、Um, and that is something to be thankful for, even though it feels hard in the moment. Did you have anything to add to that? No, not really. I mean, when we go out to eat with people, you know, here, we can speak in a different language around you, and you don't know what you're talking about.、So、yeah, yeah. That's kind of fun. <laughs> that's a I think y'all did that when you were there. We just smile and say things. That's right. So, how would you encourage someone, let's just say in a room like this, and God is stirring somebody up in here、um, for maybe overseas missions at some point, whether it's short term, long term?、Yeah. You know, how would you encourage us in here if you're seeking that call? Maybe God has stirred that up in you. I mean, I've heard y'all talk about how, your process and how the Lord directed your, your steps, but how would you encourage somebody in here, young, younger, older, whatever,、um, to, to, to seek that out and how the Lord's leading? Yeah, first, I would just to, to somebody that's kind of, you know, at least praying or thinking through kind of their participation or, you know, whether or not God has given them kind of a heart to, to、uh, or desire, I guess, to kind of pursue missions, whether it's short term or long term. You're in a great spot, like here at, at Grace Van. I think that,、um, you know, you guys just have a, an incredible love for missions and, you know, you guys just have a number of opportunities for people to kind of pursue, whether that's internationally or domestically. And so I love that. I love that. And so it's, it's, I think it's just a great spot for you to kind of pursue maybe a, a calling of some sort, whether it's just short term or,、mm-hmm. or to, to serve long time.、Yeah. Um, so,、um, but I would certainly say,、uh, in terms of advice, I guess, is seek out the, you know, you have a tremendous amount of resources here、That's、at,、right. at Grace of Anne. So, Justin, Jonathan, the pastoral staff, Jimmy,、uh, anybody really on staff, and, and, Just have a conversation about what that looks like. Maybe begin talking with your friends, talk with your parents if you're、uh, youth. And、um, uh, I think that you know, this church has just a tremendous amount of wisdom. So, and that's, just not, that's not just among the pastoral, so that's everybody. And so I think that that's、um, uh, just an incredible gift and just an incredible testimony of just God's leading this church. So, yeah, I, I would say just even start with your friends. And begin asking the question, like, hey, I feel like I don't know if it was a burrito I ate or if it's, you know, <laughs> if it's God, but hey, you know, I've been thinking about something, you know, recently, and, and, and I don't know what to do with that. And, and, you know, so certainly a conversation, prayer, obviously. And、um, yeah, I think that through,、um, through those conversations, through that seeking out of people that, that are maybe just a little bit further than you down the road in terms of life and maybe a little bit more spiritually mature, that I think. God will honor that. I think God will bring clarity. So,、mm-hmm. yeah.、Um, you know, you guys have obviously you started in January, January 2020, right? Your, the RUF ministry.、Mm-hmm. Uh, is, that, is that right? Right、um, before the pandemic? Yeah, so this would, so we started, so the pandemic hit in, in March of 2000, 2019. And then 2020. 2020, 2020, excuse me. And so, yeah, so we,、uh, we were commissioned in February of、okay. 2020. And then, And so,、Things、you know,、down. a lot has happened that you didn't expect. Of course, we've heard you talk about it. But,、yeah. you know, what, just help us.、Um, what are some big things that you're praying for?、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when it comes to just 
not only you know, reaching college students um, for, for Christ, but what are, what are the things you're praying for um, as a ministry? And, so um, when I go out on a walk and pray for our ministry, some of the things that get me most excited, I pray for the little things, um, the individual relationships. Um, two of the big things I pray for is the Bible study that's currently going on uh, for students who have never read or studied the Bible before. And I pray for another one to get started. Um, but I also pray that through the ministry of RUF that God would raise up the next generations of, pa of pastors for Japan. Mm -hmm. The pastors in Japan are preaching well into their 80s. Um, mm -hmm. They are, do not have people to replace them, and that is a huge problem. And so I just long, I just imagine these students mm -hmm. coming out of RUF and going across all of Japan, going to places that have no church at all, um, and reaching people for Christ. I, I'm praying for new leaders uh, to come up in our ministry. And I pray, one thing I pray for specifically is that our place would be a place of peace and of security and of joy. I always pray those things. I don't know why the Lord put those things on my heart. It's just what I feel the students need. They need joy. Uh, there's a huge um, issue with depression and isolation in Japan, um, particularly over this last year. Mm -hmm. And I pray our place will be a place of joy. I pray that they will meet Jesus in a way that's exciting for them and that transforms their lives, that they can move into the world without the shame. They can move into the world and make mistakes and know that the Lord still loves them. Um, I just long for those things and get excited about those things um, for our ministry. So anyways, I kind of got a little <laughs> carried away. Um, for me, I, you know, I think this is just to kind of dovetail from that. I you know, uh, so many pastors in Japan are, are pretty tired. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they are. They're preaching well into their 80s and 90s. And there's nobody among their congregation that's raising their hand saying, well, well pick me. Pass the baton on to me. You know, I'll, I'll shepherd the flock. Um, there isn't that person because the Christian population is really, really low. I mean, the Japanese are the second largest unreached people group in the world, statistically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, less than 0.25% of the population claim to have a personal relationship with, with Jesus. And so what it means is, and especially also coupled with the fact that it's a pretty aging population, aging people group, that um, uh, churches are just, their membership is just continuing to decline. And, um, and so a lot of these pastors are, are preaching because there's nobody else to, to do it. And uh, they're just seeing their, their, their congregation just dwindle. And so, you know, one of the reasons why we chose um, college ministry, not only was it because we love college ministry and we love college students and, you know, the Lord really used the college ministries that we were part of, specifically RUF, in such a powerful way to kind of shape us um, during our, our four years that uh, we, we hoped that we would be able to also kind of give back, also be able to kind of do that when we got to the spot, um, got to Japan. And so, um, but... Uh, one thing about college ministry is that it ended up, and we guess we didn't originally think this way, but it ended up being, and it is one, perhaps one of the most strategic things, I guess, to support the continued church planning initiatives in Japan to, to help maybe replace some of these aging pastors. I think the Japanese church is, a, uh, is, is basically looking at ways that, that we can replace those aged pastors, that we can continue to plant new churches. And they're like, hey, look, you know, we don't have anybody in, in, in an overworked population, like uh, overworked society. There's just not a lot of people to meet with, especially if you're like a church planner or if you're just a, a local pastor. You, you, in terms of evangelistic effort, efforts, it's really challenging. But college students in Japan just have time. They have a tremendous amount of time. And so the, our, my prayer specifically is that college ministry would, would be a great support um, to these local churches to replace the pastors and to help kind of breathe life, I guess, into the church by kind of connecting, um, kind of creating a pipeline between the church and the university to bring in young leadership that maybe one day would, would replace those pastors and grow the church to where they could get to a place where they can plant other churches to reach other communities. So yeah. uh, that's a long prayer request, but that's no, what it's <laughs> Well, no, that helps us. I mean, as a congregation, we, we want to pray and know how to pray for, with you guys, alongside you guys as, as you seek to ask God to do those very things. One thing, as we close and wrap up here, um, one thing I'm excited about is that we're, we're going to use this, this, uh, this business conference and our focus on Japan and ministry in Japan. Is, you know, the elders have recently approved uh, for us to send a team 
to J- uh, Japan, hopefully next We've been grounded for two years for our mission trips. <laughs> and so I'm praying, speaking of praying, that God would allow us to uh, send you back on mission this, co- uh, this coming year um, to, our, to our partners. And, and so I'm, we're excited to, to be able to hopefully send a team to uh, help the Saunders um, mm-hmm. do, do exactly what they're talking about, reaching college students in Tokyo. So just pray for those things, the things you've heard from them tonight. You guys, it has been so encouraging to hear uh, from you and just how God's moving in your life. I mean, you guys have a delightful family, um, getting to know you guys. Your kids are awesome. I love that they're just, Ezra just run, rambunctious up, you know, down here. I mean, he just yeah. reminds me of my son so much. But um, <laughs> thank you guys for being here. And uh, I want to uh, I want to pray for you yeah. um, and, uh, as we wrap up. And guys, as we, as we finish praying, we're going to have some desserts for you right over here. So let's pray. Father in heaven, um, God, what a, what a privilege it is to sit here uh, with uh, Jeff and Katie. And God, how just to hear this, your, of your faithfulness. God, you've been so faithful to them. Um, God, in the way you've directed their steps, the way you've um, worked out every detail and the place where they live and the schools their kids are in, and, and God, just the, the relationships that you've given them thus far. Um, Father, thank you um, for being so sovereign <laughs> that, God, you are in every detail. God, even when we don't acknowledge it, Father, remind us, God, that you are at work in every detail of our life. And so, God, thank you for, uh, for, for their willingness to say yes, to, to say, God, send me. God, use me however um, you see fit. God, use my giftings, God, to reach college students um, in the large... I mean, just mind-blowing, the largest city in the world, 36 million people. Um, and, God, Grace of Ann has a presence through... Uh, Jeff and Katie and their family right there in Tokyo. So God, would you do exactly what they're asking for? God, would you encourage these pastors who are weary? Mm-hmm. Father, would you, would you even now, God, just um, remind them of their identity in Christ? Um, God, remind them that you're going to provide every, you've, you've provided everything that they need in Christ. And that God, um, God, that you would encourage them now. God, I pray that the, the church planting that has been going on in Tokyo and, and throughout Japan would uh, continue. That, God, you would plant more churches and start more churches. And, God, use us at Grace of Van to help start them. Um, God, who knows, God, what you have planned. And so, God, we need you to direct us. God, if we um, get out of line, out of step, redirect us. Um, but, Father, would you, um, would you hear our prayer tonight? And, uh, God, we want to see a new, the next generation of uh, Japanese um, uh, college students who, uh, who not only come to faith in Christ, but, God, are the next generation of church leaders there where there is a, there is a missionary movement out of Japan, God, to go and reach other places around the world. So, God, would you, would you do this? Um, God, not because we're asking, but because, God, this is, this is, this is what you do. God, you advance your, your, you advance your gospel. You advance the good news of Jesus. And so, God, thank you for allowing us to be a part of, of your grand uh, uh, redemption plan. And, God, may we uh, seek to continue to be faithful as you have been faithful to us. Father, we love you. God, thank you for this sweet fellowship that we've had tonight as a church family. And God, continue to just develop us and, and grow us and sanctify us towards thinking like missionaries, even in our context here. God, we do this all for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, we'll have, a, we'll have some dessert for you right over here. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope that tonight has deepened your knowledge and love for our Lord. If you have any questions for us or simply would love to chat with anyone on our pastoral staff, go to our website at graceevan.org. There you will find all of our contact information from Amazing Graceland, our youth ministries, young adults, and our adult ministries. We would love to do our best to answer any questions that you may have for us. One last thing, we are meeting in person and online Sunday mornings at 9.30 and 11. You can watch us on Facebook, YouTube, and of course, at graceofand.org. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week.